Okay, continuing with where I left off last, um, was, you know, this guy just, you know, just rejected the scientists out of hand by doing this. The point is, is that, you know, just because one is atheist or one is religious or what have you, does not necessarily mean that one is stupid. Um, I've talked to, I've seen some Christians online who, um, you know, who well are, who well they are Christian, they believe in evolution. And uh, as to, uh, you know, and, and, you know, it's, it's, you know, the point is, is that there's, the thing is that what it is, it's a, more of a hyper compartmentalization. And here's the thing. You know, a large chunk of these people, uh, you know, just because they believe in religion, or, or or you because you believe in atheism, just because you believe in something or or have a lack of belief, uh, correction, uh, atheism is a lack of belief. Uh, just because you have a lack of belief um, does not necessarily make you uh, smarter or stupider. Um, you know, uh, uh, one prominent example of this was a review in the Skeptical Inquirer, where Richard Dawkins uh, was called on by was uh, you know um, you know got called on one of his attacks by a fellow atheist and uh, evolutionary biologist, who said that. Um, uh, that you know, for an entire chapter in the God Delusion, Dawkins uh, effectively uh, tried to vilify, um, you know, uh, pointed out that you know only so, like you know, only, you know the bulk of scientists don't even believe in uh, don't even believe in God or what have you. And then for the remaining seven percent of scientists, some of whom are very qualified in what they do, evolutionary biologists amongst them, um, tried to dismiss, um, you know, tried to vilify. Um, you know, effectively tried to vilify um, no, uh, religious scientists while glorifying the work of non-religious scientists. One of which was uh, was the uh, attack was the character attacks in some cases on the actual uh, head of the Human Genome Project, who was religious. Um, you know, but does that may necessarily mean that it hampered his scientific work? No. Does that necessarily mean he was uh, he was dumb? No. But on the other flip side, does that mean Dawkins is dumb for having brought up a philosophical error, or uh, like in another uh, 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 excerpt from his book, having uh, done an appeal to, uh, you know, having uh, effectively done an appeal to authority in one, um, no, sorry, was it an appeal to authority or was it a, uh, yeah, it was an appeal to authority, um, you know, for having uh, quoted a couple of journalists who just happened to agree with him, uh, you know, who may not necessarily, who didn't really have any expertise uh, as proof and didn't even provide any evidence. No, I wouldn't consider him a stupid man for having uh, for having used the critical thinking fallacy now and again. You know, the uh, the same with Penn and Teller. I would not consider them stupid for having made a blunder on environmentalism at one point. They do pretty good work on most of their shows. The same happens here. To say that a person just because they are religious is a uh, is an idiot. Um, you know, to say that a person is is automatically an idiot is, um, you know, clean across the board is an ad hominem attack, and it uh, it it only mars the, you know, it only drags down down the level of debate, and you know, and if anything, um, if, say for example, if you uh, if you do that, and okay, what if the fundamentalists are hypothetically idiots, right? Um, Kent Hovind and the likes. Well, the thing is that what if they happen to learn what an ad hominem attack was? You know, uh, um, they theoretically could twist your argument. And I've actually had this happen to me before where I have resorted to critical thinking fallacies. I have had my arguments twisted by theists to the point where I've been handed back my own argument, completely broken apart on a silver platter. I've had to learn since then to avoid critical thinking fallacies in my arguments and constantly try to, uh, um, you know, strengthen them. And that's what I'm trying to give you guys here. You know, um, calling people idiots just because they happen to believe in a religious philosophy is, um, you know, it's... It, it, you know, it lowers the bar of argument, which is not a good thing. You know, we're, you know, we're trying to maintain logic here, right? You know, if, if that's the whole idea, you know, is to show that uh, religion is blatantly ir illogical or the like, then us calling it, uh, us calling religious people stupid is, um, how shall we say, it's lowering the level of our bar. And as you said, you didn't want to look like a hypocrite for having uh, st stolen someone else's videos. Well, in this case, you would be looking like a hypocrite here for uh, for having done so, or more specifically, uh, you know, for having you know for having been more than willing to put this up here and support this entire cartoon wholeheartedly. And the author of the cartoon has also done so. Uh, now, of course, I, now does this mean that I support religion? No. Um, I don't believe in God. I don't. Uh, uh, more specifically, I be, uh, as an agnostic, I believe that God is an untestable hypothesis, and therefore, um, you know, is not really worth exploring right now. Um, now, as for religion and the harm it's done, yes, I do believe that we need to deal with that. Uh, you know, I'm with Dawkins on that one all the way. On the other hand, uh, the way that uh, the the methodry of going about it, while I'm with the same goal, I am not. I don't necessarily believe that the end justifies the means. And in this particular case, um, the means uh, in this particular case would be calling people idiots. Um, you know, to call people idiots, you're also writing them off. You're also writing off the possibility of them perhaps being later shown reason and being able to have them weaned away from their own religion. I have been able to find, um, and as a result in my own videos, I've been able to show uh, clear evidence of this, that there is an argument for evolution in scripture. You can actually interpret the first uh, chapter of Genesis and a, uh, and a, and a quote from uh, second, epistle, uh, second Epistle of Peter, chapter 3, verse 8, which would actually prove evolution by scripture. 
Now the thing is, whether that actually does or not, it's that same, you know, inferring stuff out of a vague scripture. But the point is that even by showing that you can do that through the vague inference, can uh, can show logically to uh, any, any fundamentalist or religious person that. Um, you know that their scripture is um, is vague, can be interpreted to to mean a whole bunch of different things, and therefore shouldn't uh, you know isn't as reliable as they claim it to be. You know there's there's a whole bunch of, of ways of going about this through their you know through showing them logic through the methodry which they are normally used to, and by doing that uh, you know in some cases it will actively get them um, you know back to a uh, you know it will start weaning them off of their religious faith. Prominent example of this, um, I went into a Pentecostal church which was highly fundamentalist, posed as a, as a, as a born-again Christian, and when I actually did this, uh, and I posed it just for evolution, just for evolution alone, Pentecostals are, are highly, uh, you know, anti-evolutionary, you know, they believe in intelligent design all the way. When I posited this theory, and I pointed this out from scripture, I said, you know, does for, you know, with this in mind, does an, evo does an argument of evolution, you know, uh, of evolution being a correct theory make sense? Eight out of the ten people I talked to on this one, including the pre uh, the eighth one was the priest of the church. You know, the, and he was the, funda the most fundamentalist of the lot. Um, you know, when I talked to them all, they all said, "Yeah, that the that the argument for evolution did make sense." When you when it presented from a scriptural side, they started to use their logical standpoint, and it actually I was able to start weaning them back over to evolution. Um, the only one, um, the only other two. One of them uh, said, yes, but I don't believe I evolved from a monkey, which was actually very accurate. He evolved from the common ancestor of a monkey, a chimp, and a human, you know, and, 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 a, and a homo sapiens. Like, you know, he evolved from a common ancestor. The second one of which um, basically tried to uh, basically tried to resort to an ad hominem attack and, re and rejected it. You see what I mean? So the thing is that one of them, one of them, uh, one of them just simply uh, said, "Yeah," but then his, re you know, but then his religious uh, viewpoint, uh, you know, right idea for the wrong reason, snapped back into place. And the second one, you know, like I almost had him. I almost had him on logic before his, uh, before you know, before the the uh, the, the normal, uh, before the normal uh, uh, propaganda, what have you, snapped back into place. And the point is, the very fact that I was even get, able to get through to the one of those two remaining, you know, the, the fact that I was able to get eight out of these ten people um, to. You know, to be able to agree that evolution made sense. You know, and these were f fairly fundamentalist Christians. And the fact that of the remaining two, I was—I almost had one, uh, almost convert fully to evolution. Like I almost had one before his propaganda sense snapped back. You know, like I, I almost had him, and the second one just simply rejected it out of hand. You know, basically means that you know, okay, yes, there are some who are close-minded towards their beliefs, but you know, it's only like 10%. If that group out of 10 is reflective of the population of the fundamentalist church I was talking to. You know, amongst fundamentalists, you can give them logic as long, you know, and to write them all off as idiots is to uh, preclude the possibility that some of them might just be logical, very, very, uh, very badly uneducated, and you know, just don't have context. You know, like some people, say for example in the South, where you know education is poor in some areas, could be genuinely smart, uh, just but genuinely don't have the educational background to be able to fight against the uh, the religious pedagogy or what have you. You know what I mean? They might not necessarily have the um, the educational background to do so. And to write them off as idiots is to deprive them of the chance of you or some other uh, atheist being able to provide them with that educational background to help them question their own viewpoints and then start weaning themselves off religion. You know, um, and as a, and you know, and, if, and so in summary, um, you know, I think it was inappropriate for the religious person to, uh, you know, to claim that, the, you know, the Bible is the proof of the existence of God. Um, I think he was right in debunking some of your arguments, but, you know, I, I called him on that. And I'm calling you on, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying great uh, way to debunk religion in general, but I'm calling you on uh, the idea, you know, I'm calling you on the calling of uh, religious people to be entirely idiots or, um, you know, idiots or dumbasses. Um, you know, just to you know, to write them all off as stupid is an ad hominem attack. It lowers the bar of, uh, you know, it lowers the uh, the bar of um, of, uh, of argument, which allows for other critical thinking fallacies to come in on both sides. And simultaneously, it deprives uh, certain religious people who may not be educated of the chance of getting the education. So this way, they can actually wean themselves off or come back to logic and science. You know, it deprives people of that right. You know, of that right. So, you know, to write them off as idiots is to deprive them of that right, and to, uh, you know, to uh, glorify yourself over them, uh, you know, as your superior, and then to, um, you know, to reject uh, the possibility of other, uh, of other, uh, th of other theists or religious people from getting the same chance that you did, and thus be a being able to uh, develop a lack of belief in a higher power. You see where I'm going with this? It's not right. Uh, you know, it's not right, and it is illogical. So I'm calling you on it, and I'm hoping that uh, the bulk of you and Cap Noah and you know spread this to Cap Noah and the other strong atheists out there to um, you know avoid this sort of work. I've already called Cap Noah on some of his videos. I'm calling you on this one. I expect you to call other atheists on uh, critical thinking fallacies too.
Toodles. <laughs>